Rulon Gardner. Does that ring a bell, guys? So, Rulon Gardner in 2000 pulled off the biggest upset in Olympic history. Now, that's a record that still holds. Not just upset for wrestling. It is a wrestling story. The biggest upset in Olympic history, period, any sport. Do you guys remember Alexander Karelin? And some of you will, because Karelin was the most feared man in sport. This is the way that they described him. Train like a madman. Does that ring a bell? There was posters on this. There was videos that went out. It's, it's Karelin training, but he's in Siberia. He's running through the snow. It looked very similar to the stuff that they did in a depiction of the movie Rocky. But this was really how Corellan trained, and he was a monster. Corellan had never been beaten. Corellan, while being the most feared athlete in the world, got into MMA, and he did something in Japan, and I don't know how that went. It wasn't real. It was, it was wrestling. Japan was very big on that for a period of time, where they would bring in choreographed, phony, matches, but they would just, they would reveal them to you, the audience, as a real fight. And Corellan was known for something called the reverse lift. And the reverse lift is a very common technique in Greco-Roman wrestling. It's a very good, safe, high-scoring maneuver. You just don't see it at heavyweight. And Corellan, who was a heavyweight, would reverse lift people. He would pick up these great big men, tip them upside down, throw them all through the air, which scored five points. He was the only heavyweight to do this. He was known for it. Anyway, when Corellan Goes over to Japan, he does the MMA thing. He reverse lifts the guy like three times. It, it, the whole thing was silly. Corellan realized, I'm going to end up being humiliated. I'm going to make a fool out of my career. And he walked away from it. I only tell that story in case that rings a bell. Alexander Corellan, when he walked away from that, answers directly to Vladimir Putin. He is a five-star general, and he was placed in that position without coming up to the ranks of military service. He had done so much for Russia and represented so well, and he was respected. Such a respected man. Made him a five-star colonel. Now, the only reason I go down the road and telling you about Corellan, Rulon beat him. Rulon Gardner had beaten him. Now is it ringing a bell? Now, a moment ago, when I said, do you know Rulon Gardner? Now it's ringing a bell, right? The year was 2000. Corellan had gone 13 years in a row undefeated. World championships every year, but three of those were Olympic years, so we won three Olympic titles as well. Gets in the finals of the Olympic Games, which is to beat Corellan's final match and his fourth gold medal. And that's exactly how this story was going to go. When I was a Rulon friend, I was a Rulon fan. That's the way the story was going to go. Nobody was beating Corellan. For sure. NBC featured this because it was his final match. They featured, they never featured a wrestling match ever. You can even get wrestling with the terrible coverage that NBC does. You're getting it delayed. You're not going to get a whole match, but then even the crap that they will give you, they delay it. This one they did live because it was Corellan, not because it was Rulon. Rulon beat him one to nothing. The great Alexander Corellan who'd beaten 60 men in a row, did not beat 61. Rulon sticks around. He stays within wrestling. Russia goes back. They regroup. They find the next guy to beat him, which is all part of a fascinating story. Somewhere along the journey of 2000 to present day, Rulon, who was always a heavyweight and always had to keep a real good look on that number, real good look on the scale, somewhere along there because he wasn't competing, Got a lot bigger to the point that he went on a reality show called The Biggest Loser. Somewhere along the way of this journey, Rulon took a snowmobile out, couldn't get home. And when they found him, he had frostbite and they had to remo remove three of his toes. So it's a very interesting and very compelling case because just recently, Rulon has announced that he's coming back to wrestling. Now, I as a fan, I love this. And people get what's called Olympic fever. When the Olympics roll around, you get these old dogs or these veterans and they come back and they want one more shot at glory. It never works out. I, like, I don't have a story for you that I can tell you where this was a good idea. But Rulon's different. He's 52 years old, or at least when the Olympics in Paris roll around, he'll be 52 years old. And Rulon decides last week he's going to do the first match of his comeback. Now, he'd been training, and nobody knows exactly what that means. When these veterans have an idea and they come back, none of us really know how long have they been looking at this. How long have they been getting up in the morning? How long have they been slipping out for a jog 
at night. But Rulon's going to come back. Oh, and by the way, it's going to be as part of a dual meet that a high school called Mead High School, Leister Bolin, who you guys will know, coaches a lot of the top MMA guys, coaches a lot of the wrestlers, but Leister Bolin has an in, and he's going to work with the athletic department, and on the back end of this high school dual meet, they're going to host the return of Rulon Garner. Great, who's Rulon going to wrestle? He's going to wrestle Jacob Mitchell, and that's where things become a problem. Jacob Mitchell grew up right up the road from me. Jacob Mitchell won two national championships for the community college right up the road from where I'm sitting right now, and Jacob Mitchell was the U.S. Open champion somewhere within the last three years. I've got to word it to you like that because COVID has thrown everything off for me, truly. I used to know every, this was 10 months ago, this was a year and a half ago, COVID threw it off, but somewhere within the last three years, Jacob Mitchell got his hand raised as the champion. Just so you understand, whoever wins the U.S. Open is to be the, the greatest wrestler amongst all of us. You'll have the NCAA, well, that's to a category. You'll have the junior nationals in Fargo, but that's a specific category. If you win the Open, they combine all of the categories. So Rulon, who's going to return after 18 years away from the mat, is going to take on who was our absolute best guy in a very short period of time. This is not going to go well. There is nobody who could come back after 18 years and go with the U.S. Open champion and finish the match. They would be pinned, they would be technical fault, they would get injured and have to stop. Nobody could finish the match. Rulon went all six minutes with him. Now the score was 0-0. They had a draw. I was going to hold that from you guys. I was going to withhold the result because I videotaped it. I was going to make you come watch the video, but it's important that you know this for my part of the story. There is nobody in freestyle or Greco-Roman who could return after 18 years and go the distance with our top guy. Could, could not. It's never happened, but there's nobody that would make believe that they could. Rulon did. It's done. It's behind us. It was Thursday of last week. I jumped on an airplane. I flew out to it. I videoed the whole thing, and I'm going to bring it to you. But it's a very interesting component because now you're dealing with the heavyweight class and you're dealing with Greco-Roman within the United States. It's very interesting, right? We had Jermiel walk away, the same as we had Rulon walk away. We had Adam Kuhn rumored to going off with the Tennessee Titans. We had Robbie Smith one day decides he's going to be a coach, right? I mean, it's one of these things where there's a little bit, at least a little bit of a door open. And Rulon went six minutes with the best we got. And the best we got didn't score on him. Now, Rulon didn't get any points back. But a draw is a really big deal. I can't imagine you're ever going to wrestle a worse match than your first match back after 18 years. I mean, that would just be good reason by me that things are only going to get better. Can we all agree on that? So we have a process back that has begun by Rulon Gardner. I'm going to bring you on this journey. I just gave you a crash course in eight minutes from 2000 Rulon to 2022 Rulon, but apparently the story is not quite over.